We continue to discuss the roles and functions of permanent secretaries and with us is the special advisor to Jamaican Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Portia Simpson Miller, Dr. The Honorable Carlton Davis himself, a former cabinet secretary. Dr. Davis, let's talk about the role of the permanent secretary now in recruitment of staff, the development of, uh, of, of staff, and the whole, the whole management of the, of, of the staff. In, in the particular ministry? Well, the permanent secretary, outside of these policy functions, which I described earlier, policy advisory, policy implementation, monitoring and evaluation, the permanent secretary has an important role to play in the development of the department for which he has supervisory responsibility, as outlined in the constitution that I just read earlier he or she has to play an active role in recruiting key staff. Whilst this is the function largely of the Public Service Commission, there are occasions in the constitutions of a number of Commonwealth Caribbean countries, including Jamaica and Barbados for sure, and I think I've seen it Antigua, where this function might be delegated to the permanent secretary. And this is being done in Jamaica at the moment. So however you look at it, a permanent secretary has an important role to play in the recruitment of staff, whether directly or through the Public Service Commission. And to this extent, he or she must ensure that best practices are carried out in recruitment of staff. And as I said at the, um, the sessions a, a few days ago, there is a lot of documentation. I know the Canadian Treasury Board and Canadian um, Public Service Commission have a lot of documentation on just how you go about this process to minimize the chances of, of, shall we use a cliche, drawing a bad card. Having recruited the person, the permanent secretary has the responsibility to ensure that the person is developed as a professional in service. And this takes various forms, maybe internal um, seminars, sessions, um, sending the person to particular training courses, um, mentoring, which is an important, I have, I have found, I have done that myself, mentor a lot of younger people so that they can at least see your approach to development. You will have to motivate because especially in a challenging environment where you don't have a lot of money to pay people, the sort of situation we are facing now, you have to find other means how you can retain people in the public service. So the permanent secretary has a very important role to play in motivating the people, having them involved. Very often um, people see all sorts of great things going on. They see um, important people coming and going, and they don't see their role in this whole process. S inculcating them the, 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 in the belief, the ethic, of reading as a development objective, uh -huh. if not an aesthetic one. I've, I have said it over and over again. Most people seem to burn the books immediately after they have finished a degree whether um, an undergraduate degree or a postgraduate one. And this is unfortunate. And I have found over and over again that the limitation is that people are not reading around. I mean, you were telling me earlier about an article in, in Foreign Policy, which I contributed to on um, Kindle. And I find that people have to be reading these things. Mm -hmm. I once had an experience in which we were trying to sell bauxite to the U.S. government stockpile. And while if we can use a cricketing terminology, the wicket was rolled and we were going to sell the bauxite. The matter of price had not been determined. Now, I had taken the trouble to read the way the Bureau of Mines in the United States goes about pricing, including the fine print. And so when we went into the room, I said to, Mr. to Hugh Hart, 
who was my partner in this. Let's accept their proposal the way they had it, that they will use the Bureau of Mines. I said, but we have to get up. I said, let's accept it. When we went out of the room, he said, why did you do that? I said, the fine print says the pricing was based on the wet bauxite. That is the bauxite before drying. And the difference was 17%, which translated into $4 a ton. And for three and a half million tons was 14 million US dollars. I'm only just giving you an mm -hmm. example. But I swear, I taken the trouble to read. You were. It had a, a and I a could give you scores of examples. But more, much more importantly, it enables you to, to reach out beyond the narrow confines mm -hmm. of your particular subject. It enables you to re relate to people, true. bring people in by reading something about their culture, Absolutely. their way of life. You bring them in to conversation. They sometimes are likely to be more sympathetic yes. to your point of view. So it expands your influence. It ex expands your influence. Yes. So you can look at it from a development, mm -hmm. uh, aesthetic, and an influence mm -hmm. perspective. And I think that if I were to put my finger on a major limitation of a lot of senior leaders in the public service is their disinterest in reading. A practical issue, uh, Ambassador Davis, the permanent secretary will say that she's swamped with so much work, swamped with the, the necessary reading, swamped with the day-to-day -day management of her portfolio, that she just doesn't have the time. How, how, do, you, how do you respond to it's that? It's a discipline. How it's a discipline. It, it, it's no different from, say, if you have the job because you need to get your weight down. Right. It's a discipline. And you've got to school yourself to say, without this discipline, you can't do the job effectively. You, exactly. This is integral to it. It's not right. supplementary. It's a discipline. And I think that most people need to think about it and try to make the time. And I believe that, I know that, I mean, I, I have been busy in my time, it's true. but I have found time f for reading, not just to, s to indicate to people that I am uh, um, smarter than anybody else, mm -hmm. but because of the value which I get from it, which we, we just described earlier. Yes. How important, Ambassador, are the emotional competences, the, the communication skills, the ability of the permanent secretary to have empathy, to be able to understand um, where people are coming from, that kind of thing, the emotional competences, not just the intellectual. How important are those yes, and to I think efficiency? I think it is not generally conceded, and it came out last week, in the discussions in, 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 in one of the, it's, it's becoming much more important, these so-called soft skills, That's right. which in our hierarchical way of classifying <laughs> things, we tend to, <laughs> so if a person we says, do. I'm doing um, information and communications, then, ah, yes, that's a hard skill. Yes, yes. It is becoming much more important, your emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. your communication skills. I, I can't overstate the communication skills. Mm -hmm. The ability that if you appear before parliament, if you appear before the media, if you appear before service clubs, is to communicate, explain to people why things are not what they would have liked them to be mm -hmm. or otherwise. And then the emotional intelligence. I think that is one of the most difficult ones. I have, I have myself made mistakes in choices because I never spotted the emotional deficiency yes. of certain people. And it, 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 it is something in which we have to search for the best practices to select people who are as emotionally intelligent as possible and where it is amenable to training, make sure that that training is given. But I have found more and more that these so-called soft skills are vital skills in, in doing an effective job. And in, in terms of the permanent secretary's ability to pull people along, to build consensus, to, to engender support 
increasingly it will be those skills, not just the cognitive skills, absolutely. but the emotional skills which will help. Absolutely, absolutely. And people like to feel. You're Ever, yes, honored. people have, yes, and, 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 and they have done a lot of surveys. Been done. And funny enough, money falls pretty much the most down the order. Right. And that people feel, they like to feel that there is an, in, in an institution in which they like to feel if their boss is Here's somebody that is recognized, yes. it, it, it lifts, mm -hmm. it, it enhances their status. They, they want to feel that their boss thinks much of them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so on. So these are, to me, important development skills which should not be underestimated and should not be put low in the hierarchy mm -hmm. because of our tendency to determine that, you know, like when law, medicine, and theology <laughs> were they in the 19th century, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. things you, do, you did yes. and some other things you yes. did not do, mm -hmm. those things are no longer yes. Th those 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 classifications are no longer um, valid. Yes, we, we talked about the importance of the soft skills and the importance of reading. What are some of the other skills you think the permanent secretary must have? I think in this day and age, a permanent secretary must master some substantive area. Is it the environment? Is it a matter of energy? Is it the matter of international relations? Is it a matter of the in Communications in its in it in, in it in its widest yeah. framework and, and 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 how it's merging, that's one area. I think you can't do all of them, of course, mm -hmm. but I think it's important to be able to master a few of them. The permanent secretary has got to master certain processes, the preparation of the budget, uh -huh. or, or at least be knowledgeable to oversee them. The permanent secretary has to master. Importantly, now with a more transparent ethos, to be able to respond to the public in in, in, in terms of of issues, and those are some of the sort of additional skills a permanent secretary. A permanent secretary should try to be able to write in a concise way, understandable and understandable way, right and reader friendly. I, th I think that's not always easy, especially in this age of, you know, texting and so on, <laughs> um, where verbs are being um, <laughs> sort of eliminated uh, and so on. But at the end of the day, people must be able to read what you say and be persuaded by it. Mm -hmm. And the ability of the permanent secretary to get to a yes to be effective in negotiation, whether with her minister, with, with stakeholders, is highly dependent on the authority that the permanent secretary um, brings, not by virtue of her position, but knowledge, Absolutely. skills, and, and mastery of the area. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that that's more and more. But so much depends. What I think has happened, you see, in our let paper um, degree culture, mm -hmm. we tend to feel that if after an undergraduate degree we do a master's or a PhD, that's it. Yes. And so you will go into a lot of offices and you cannot see a square <laughs> inch on the wall because they are so um, <laughs> occupied With by degrees and so on. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people genuinely feel that having done that, yes. that's it. There's no need for continuing and, education. And, no and, and so it, it's it's, it's the position in the hierarchy that carries them. And very often, when they are disappointed that despite the position in the hierarchy, they don't seem to be getting the respect or the, you know, it's, it, it's not recognizing that you have not continued your own process of self-development. Absolutely right. And at a time when, when knowledge is, is moving so rapidly, and become so easily outdated. It's Absolutely. important for the permanent secretary Absolutely. to be on the cusp of information. You're watching a special Caribbean Leadership Project interview on the roles and responsibilities of the permanent secretary. And we're speaking to one of the Caribbean's most distinguished public servants and a former head of the Jamaican Public Service, Ambassador Dr. Carlton Davis. We take our final break.
Welcome back to the special Caribbean Leadership Project interview on the rules and functions of the Permanent Secretary. We are speaking to the Special Advisor to Jamaican Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Portia Simpson Miller, Dr. The Honorable Carlton Davis. He was head of the Jamaican uh, Civil Service, was Cabinet Secretary for a number of years. Dr. Davis, this issue of the permanent secretary who assumes um, his position as a result of working himself up through the system, coming through the ranks, that method as opposed to bringing in people from the, the, the private sector who have had years of experience in management, running uh, private sector companies, running for-profit uh, companies. Is, is there a greater value in one over the other? It, put it this way. It is it, managing it, complex it, societies. Yeah, it is ideal if you can bring somebody out from outside in. What has been happening is that we have not been competitive in, in salaries. Oh. And that has limited our ability to really be as expansive in bringing people from the outside sector mm -hmm. into the public service. So we have found ourselves increasingly relying on bringing people from within the public sector. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Ian, it's not even possible for bringing them from certain areas in the public sector. I don't think a person would leave the Port Authority, for example, to come and work as a permanent secretary <laughs> yes. because of the differences in, 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 in compensation. Yes. Yes. So what you have to do is to try to make the system work as well as possible within this sort of limitation. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but one is not saying, of course, that one method is automatically superior. There are excellent people who have come through the ranks. Absolutely. In the where you are your excellent I have example. Seen, I have seen, well, I have had in this bauxite experience that I had, mm -hmm. I have seen, I have had to work with the late Maya Matalan, yes. Pat Russo, yes. the late Sir Jetan Richardson, who was yes. a public servant, Sir Alistair McIntyre, who was yes. a university Academic. person. So I was able to see that the best is the best. Yes, absolutely. And it doesn't matter where the best comes, comes from. from. It is for us to see, uh, you know, the best models to follow, mm -hmm. and to and to and and to and to and to model them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Singapore model. I mean, one of the key things to Singapore's success is the quality of its public sector, the, yeah. the status of its public sector. Very Singapore could not have achieved the astounding economic results very high status without the high quality, quality public, service. public sector. Well, they pay well. They pay well for one. They are, and, and because, well, I wouldn't say because, they, but they, partly they, they because they pay well. Mm -hmm. They can come down hard on corruption. Yes. They are very, um, it's, it's a very high quality society Absolutely. all around. Albeit it's not as democratic as it's some not. of our societies, but nevertheless important. Yes. But well, is it important for the Caribbean if it is to achieve respectable levels of economic growth to put a great em emphasis on the quality of its public sector Absolutely. needs and, and, and also the quality Absolutely. of the permanent secretary? I say continuous training, continuous self-development, -de bringing, bringing in role models, uh -huh. Um, lectures. I even encourage writing. Yes. Because writing sharpens your intellect. Sharpens your thinking. You know, and mm -hmm. your thinking. Yes. Talk to us, Dr. Davis, about your own critical success factors. Um, you are highly recognized throughout the Caribbean, certainly in your own uh, country, Jamaica, for the distinction that you have brought to the public um, sector. Uh, you have modeled uh, success. What have been your critical success factors? What are the elements which have contributed to your excellence? Well, I'm a good learner. I read. I work hard. And I, I you know, I, I think those are the elements those I bring. Are the here. What are the personal qualities? What is it about Carlton Davis that has, has resulted in this enormous track record of I, success? I don't know. I think. 
I w as I say, I'm willing to learn. Willing to learn. Yeah. I read. Yeah. Communication skills. Com I try. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've developed that. I yes. used to be a debater in university. Oh, I see where that comes from. And those things. Those are critical things. Yeah. If if you were to, to to mentor someone who is going into the public sector and someone who is about to become a permanent secretary, what would you tell the person are the most critical things he or she needs to have? Learn. Continuous development. Keep emphasizing that. Continuous development. Continuous development. Yeah. Work hard. Mm -hmm. Those are the elements. Those are the two yeah. key elements. Yeah. You must have encountered some difficulties in your career, some uh, critical decision points when the wrong decision could have been catastrophic. Yeah. How have you navigated the, the waters on those occasions? What helped you? Well, I have confidence in my own ability. Okay. I can admit if I made a mistake. It's a humility. I try to correct those sort of things. Yes. So the ability to criticize oneself, this, the ability to, to, to interrogate oneself, that's an important Absolutely. ability that one needs to, Absolutely. Uh, to, to have. Do you think we have enough of a, a tradition of of self-criticism in the Caribbean are really. coming from our plantation not culture really. of not authoritarianism really. not really. and not really. command command and control not tactics. Really. Not really. So there are particular challenges we yeah. have in the, in, in yeah. the Caribbean. How, how do you suggest that we overcome those challenges? I think we just have servants? to, well, firstly, we have to recognize we're up against it. Mm -hmm. That there are no donors around to just give you things and make it easy for you. Mm -hmm that you are, for what it is, you are there, and you have to lead. Mm -hmm. Those are the sort of things I would say. So the importance is on the quality of leadership that the public uh, right. servant has to bring, and, and, and more particularly the, right. the, 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 the permanent secretary. Let's just go back just briefly to the issue of, of policy, um, 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 ambassador, policy formulation and um, policy implementation. Are there particular guidelines you would suggest to the permanent secretary as to how she can have a, a more harmonious relationship in terms of the, the execution of policy with a particular minister? Well, one of the things is, is some public servants, because we are better educated, generally, yes. than a lot of politicians. It doesn't take, uh, you don't have to have a degree to run as a minister yes, or a yes. thing. I think that some of us go with a superior stance. Okay. I think we must disabuse ourselves of that. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to, um, so you start off with some humility. Yes. I don't think there is a lot of humility sometimes in public servants. Mm -hmm. And we take our education maybe a little bit more seriously than we ought to. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to um, understand the perspectives from which other people are coming, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. To see what are their issues, what are, why are some of these things important to them. I think we need to understand that. And sometimes you see from your own narrow perspective we, after all, don't have to face an election in every five years yes. or thing. And yes. so certain pressures, um, I used to say to my brother, who has been in politics for quite some time, yes. I don't have to deal with people. <laughs> and sometimes I get, um, I, I get into problems because yes. I go to a funeral and they say, Dr. Davis, um, I'd start because they're mixing us up. <laughs> and I understand those sort of pressures. So you have to understand that. But very importantly, you must, establish, you must establish your own confidence, your own professionalism that you're going to give it. I mean, Mr. Daly, who spoke at the closing ceremony, 
um, at, of this year, the, the first cohort, was talking about being forceful in giving your policy advice, not to be afraid mm -hmm. to give your advice. Mm -hmm. Don't be um, afraid, you know, because of the, the minister might not like it. Yes. I think a lot of um, permanent secretaries tend to f try to figure out what it is they think the minister would like gives him and, and gives them what he wants. Yes, Minister Attitude. <laughs> that right. was parodied in that famous um, British sitcom. Right. It's not really the way to go. Right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, is, it is the authority of the permanent secretary. Yes. Which will carry the, the way and the weight. Yes. You, you would suggest. Yeah. What would you regard as the, the most challenging thing that you faced as cabinet secretary? Mm. I think that you know, one of the things a good cabinet secretary ought to do is not to put on the agenda something that is not ready for the agenda. Okay. And uh, some ministers are not happy with that. As a matter of fact, they wonder why are you arrogating such authority when you, they don't think you possess it. Mm -hmm. I think, and th this is where a good working relationship with a prime minister is important mm -hmm. because um, you can discuss with the prime minister and say, look, I don't think this thing is ready for the agenda and these are my reasons. Now, the prime minister may on occasion and say, put it on because there may be other perspectives mm -hmm. which he or, he, he or she may have. But generally speaking, it has been one of the most difficult things. Denying a minister who is in a hurry I have seen one or two <laughs> in some critical areas mm -hmm. in which you may feel that there are some issues that have not been um, admitted to, I put it no better than that, uh, in which the submission is a little bit too sterilized mm -hmm. to give a more optimistic presentation and the cabinet could make a decision um, not properly informed that I find is an issue that we has created problems. Yeah. I've had a situation too in which permanent secretaries have not operated in the way they should have. And this has created, um, in, in which you are forced yes. to have to indicate to the permanent secretary that I don't think we can recommend so you staying on. Yeah. No, that's not easy. That's very and some of these people you grew up with, Precisely. they were your professional colleagues. It's just yes. that you happened to be somewhere else at the time. So courage is important for the Courage is very important. It's a very important attribute. It's a very important attribute, not just the reading and the learning and so on, but courage. you must have courage. And you must also be, diversity is important. More and more this is becoming important. We, uh, we have come to terms with it in, even within religion. Yes. Um, we have come to terms with it, uh, coming to terms with it more or less with gender mm -hmm. and race. Um, and there are some issues that we are going to face that the society <laughs> is, 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 is not going to be we able know. to avoid for very long. Yes. But, you know, as I was saying to somebody, left-handers were once thought to be, um, in fact, is the French word gauche. Yes. Left-handers were once thought not to be... Um, yes, correct. Normal. Yeah, normal. Yes. And um, so on. So, of course. The, so diversity. So diversity. And um, okay. my late mother used to teach me, I don't know where she got it, if all the world doesn't please you, nor the way some people do, do you think the whole creation is going to be altered just for you? Yes, <sighs> And, and you, you've got to understand that. Yes, yes. See? Very fine words on which to, to end. Thank you very much, Dr. Davis, for all the insights that you have uh, provided. This has been a special Caribbean Leadership Project interview looking at the roles and functions of the Permanent Secretaries. We thank you for having joined us. I am Ian Boyne.